Hey there Hunters, welcome back to the Gunner's Guild. In today's info dump video, we're going to be discussing the dungeons in Remnant 2. Specifically the ones that don't end up with a boss, so I'm just going to call them like side dungeons I guess. Reason being is that dungeons that have a boss are very simple to figure out. You just, you know, have your trait book, a corpse drop, an injectable, and then you kill the boss and you're done. So if you're familiar with the injectable for the zone, check out my videos if you're not, it's pretty easy to clear the zone without missing anything. However, the other dungeons tend to have puzzles and other little events you need to do to complete them entirely. So because of this, we're going to go through and cover all the dungeons and what you need to do to complete them entirely. We're going to assume that you're familiar with the injectables and got that done, so we're not going to cover any of that here. But let's dive in. So in this video, we're going to cover all the side dungeons and puzzles in Losum, both the Fey and Tran side. We're going to begin with the Postulants Parlor. This zone can be rather difficult and confusing, but keeping yourself oriented with your map definitely helps. The goal here is to get to the top middle where you're going to find your little Connect 3 game that you have to play with this guy. I'm not going to pretend like I know how to abuse the AI and force wins, so I won't be explaining any tactics. But there are three outcomes and items you need to collect here. The last thing you want to do is win. So first we need to open up the door to the top right corner of the map. And if you've noticed, the map and the board share the same layout. Every time you move a piece, you open the doors connected to your pieces. Likewise, the doors connected to the opponent's pieces are always closed. So you need to move him around as much as you gotta move yourself around to make clear paths. Anyway, get your piece to the top right corner, and then back away from the game, run down there, kill the enemies, and you can pick up your Fey Warrior armor, though I probably said the name wrong. It's the Ringwraith armor. Then you can head back to the game. If you have a co-op partner, before you finish the game, you're gonna want to get someone down to the bottom left corner. Here you're gonna need to move the pieces so that the doors open, and then get the other guy to go through the door, because now he'll be between two doors, and then you have to move your piece off so that the door closes behind him, and then that's going to open up the inner door, revealing the Game Master's Pride Ring. You have to do this with two players, don't try otherwise. Anyway, once you're done with that, you can finally beat the game through whatever means necessary, a lot of random guessing, abuse the AI, do what you gotta do. Finish up, and the door behind him is going to open, where you can grab the Royal Hunting Bow, and that's all three items here, so you're done, you can now dip. Alright, the next side dungeon here we need to cover is the Council Chambers. In this dungeon, pretty much at the beginning of the area, you're just going to come up to the Council, who are arguing about someone who killed the one true king. You can get involved, and they're going to task you with finding out who did it. Easy enough. Run through the Council Chambers and pick up your injectable and loot, then wrap all the way around to the back of the zone, where you're going to come up to the mirror that's going to transport you to the Underdark. Head through here, and you're going to be in a small zone, where you will be back at the Council Chambers, just you know, on the dark side. Clear the enemies in the area, there's kind of a lot. After you do all that, you're going to need to move to these plaques under the council chamber seats, and then match these colors with the colors in the mirror. Doing this is going to open up the door to the One True King's room. Head in there, climb up the One True King, and then jump to the ledge behind him where you can grab the assassin's seal. Turn around and climb up to the neck behind with the One True King, and you can see the dagger in his neck. You can look at the pommel of the dagger before you pull it out, and then you can see the symbol on it, which corresponds to one of the council members that you need to accuse. You can also inspect the dagger in your inventory as well. From here, you just need to leave and head back to the council on the light side, but you do have some choices to make. The first thing that you can do is turn the dagger into the council and properly accuse the right member, and in return, you'll be gifted with the ornate blade. But that's boring. You can also go back and accuse the wrong person on purpose and fight the council, which are the three elite knights. Killing them will grant you the Fey Protector Signet Ring. Great. Now you can also take the Assassin's Dagger to Nimue and turn it into an actual dagger weapon. That's the path I'd recommend. So you're going to need to do this at least once or twice to get everything. But that's all here, let's go ahead and move on. Up next is the Great Hall. This dungeon's pretty fun. And for the most part, there's nothing too special until you get to the end of the zone. So run through, get your injectable, and make your way to the end. Now once you've reached the end area, you can go up these stairs or use the Dumbwaiter at the back and grab the Feastmaster's Medallion. You can then go and open up the shortcut and head back to the beginning of the zone. Now before you put the Medallion in the door and open up the Great Grand Dining Room here, you do have a choice. If you have Nightweaver as your world boss, you can instead throw the Medallion into the Nightweaver's nest to get the material needed for the Rune Pistol. After you get the material, you can go to Nimue who's going to craft it. Or you can just use it and get to the dining room here. Now when you get inside to the signing room, make sure you talk to the host who has leprosy. Be polite, he looks gross, I know. But don't say anything about how bad the feast looks, it looks like dog shit, it might actually be dog shit. But anyway, get through his dialogue. You need to do this so that at the end you can talk to him again and then he'll grant you the neckbone necklace. Anyway, when he asks you to finally partake, go ahead and eat some food. You're gonna go ravenous, which is gonna prevent you from healing and slowly drain your HP. 
and then you're also going to get assaulted by a ton of phase and elites. Clear all the mobs, and if you need a heal, you need to grab one of the waiters who's running around and eat them. If you have a co-op partner and they go down, you can eat them instead of helping them up, and then doing so is going to grant you the glutton trait. So finish up the siege event, and then talk to the host and get your amulet. Now on the right hand side of the room, there's a fireplace with a false back. Crouch through there, and then go into the room where you can pick up the Feastmaster Signet Ring. Then come out of that room, and then take the dumb waiter on the left hand side of the table, and take it all the way down. And in this room, we're going to have a Brute Elite, as well as the Bone Chopper weapon. Go ahead and kill the Elite, take the weapon, and leave, because you're all done here. And then we have the Butcher's Quarter. This zone, like many others, has nothing significant besides their injectable until you get to the very end. Now once you're at the end checkpoint, you have to quickly make a decision. Up ahead is a guy who is going to be burned alive. You can walk up and just watch as they burn him and do nothing, and then doing this will grant you the Shade Skin trait, and you can also then rest at the checkpoint and come back to the execution area now that everyone is dispersed, and there's going to be a pig eating the guy's corpse. Shoot the pig, and it will drop you the Singed Ring. This is the one outcome. Now your other choice is that you can walk into the execution grounds here and just start mowing down Dran. This is going to start a small siege event where you get attacked by all sides from Dran spawning in. And occasionally there's going to be a guy with a torch who will try to set the hanging man on fire. You need to prevent him from burning the guy by all means. Don't even use like explosives or fire here because you can set the pyre ablaze yourself. At the end of the event you'll have an elite that you need to kill. Anyway, once you save the guy, he jumps down, thanks you, and he's going to give you the Dran Memento Ring. These other two possible outcomes, pick one, and then reset and have to do the other one later. But that's all here. Up next is Harvester's Reach. In this dungeon, you're going to see a Dran pouting on the floor near the World Stone. I think he's looking for his wife or something. I don't know, I didn't read. Anyway, in this zone, there are like five piles of bones that each going to have a Bone Harvester Elite in them. If you kill all the Bone Harvesters in the zone, you're going to get the Arcane Strike trait. There are five total bone harvesters, remember that. One of these bone harvesters though is going to be an aberration that will drop the lively mutator when slain as well as Drea's anklet. Now you have two options with this anklet. You can just give it to the guy at the beginning who's going to thank you and give you the ring of grace. Or again if you have the night weaver in your world, you can throw the anklet into the night weaver's web and get the ring of retribution. Also don't forget that the sewer tile set has a special trigger in them. One of the gratings is going to have the trigger for the albino bone harvester, which is going to grab you and take you to the spot where you can get the alchemist armor. Just kill the bone harvester, get his strike stone pearl, and then pick up the armor. Each sewer zone has this, but it can take a while to find the right grating, and if you die or miss the grab, you're going to have to reset and try a different grating. So good luck with that, but that's all for this zone. And then the last zone we have is Tiller's Rest. In this zone, you're going to be possessed by a wisp, and then you have to escort it around the entire area. Open up all the time doors, fight all the waves of Dran that get progressively harder, make your way all the way to the end of the dungeon, and step into the light which is going to free the Wisp, releasing unknown horrors upon the world. Good job you. As a gift, the Wisp is going to leave you behind the Spirit Wisp amulet. You can keep the amulet, or you can take it to the Dran guy hiding in the little cubby hole down here. He will take it off your hands and give you the outcast sigil in exchange, so regardless you're going to need to do this dungeon twice to get both rewards. But that's all for here besides your injectables and possibly getting the alchemist armor from the open grating. But yeah, that's basically all the dungeons here in Losum. Thank you all for watching, and good luck out there, hunters.